People don't leave organizations, they leave leaders. That is one of the top three reasons why people leave an organization. And therefore the quality and the caliber of leadership capability is really important. And one of the questions I always challenge leaders on is, do people follow you because they want to or because they have to? And leadership is not about title, it's about how you inspire others, how they want to be led by you because you create the environment for them to bring their A game and be the best version of themselves, that you help them to grow and be better individuals, not just professionally, but personally as well. Um, so I'm really passionate about purposeful, authentic, inspirational leadership is such a integral part of building a high performance legacy business today. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Making It Happen by Sims. Um, I'm your host today, I'm Mel, um, and I'm delighted to be joined by a very special guest. Um, and by name, um, we have Royston Guest joining us. Hello, Royston, how are you? Yeah, great. Thanks, Mel. Great to be on the podcast. Looking really looking forward to the session. Fabulous. Yeah. So I think the, the premise of today, it's a new year, um, starting planning goals. Um, so we're going to discuss um, how individuals and biz businesses can plan for success. So um, obviously this can be done any time of the year, but it feels like when it's the new year, it's the, the everyone's raring to go. So hopefully we've got some good tips and advice for, for some of our listeners today. So um, so if we can just take a little minute, and um, for those that don't know, can you just uh, take a minute to introduce yourself and um, tell us um, sort of your journey so far um, to bring you to where you are? Yeah, brilliant. So I run a growth coaching technology business called Pathways Global. So we work with clients in growing and scaling their businesses. However, um, one of my key expressions is that businesses don't grow on their own, leaders grow businesses. So not only is it about the growth of the business, it's about the growth of leadership and getting the talent density right in the businesses as well. Uh, Pathways is a new business. I sold my previous business um, but I've been doing what I do for over 20 years now. And the whole premise is about unlocking potential, unleashing success, helping individuals to be the best that they can be. And of course, one of the vehicles through realizing their goals and ambitions is to build a high performing, sustainable legacy business. So that is our focus. That's what we focus. do day in, day out. You are the right the right man for the job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I certainly like to think so. And, uh, you know, the client's testament is, uh, you know, we love what we do and that's the most important thing. And, you know, you talk about planning for success. One of the things I always say is that if you are doing your passion every single day, you will never work a day in your life. Uh, yep. and, you know, I, I'm fortunate that every single day I get to go and do my passion, which is about helping people to unlock their potential and unleash the success. And what can be more rewarding than that? And that certainly shines through. I think you you do a lot. Um, uh, you do uh, sort of little snippets every now and again. Obviously, you work closely with with Sims. Um, and I certainly say passionate is is definitely shines through. I think after a session with you, you're sort of like raring to go and and feel like you can can tackle anything. So hopefully that uh, some of that transports onto to the audience today, and uh, there be uh, by by the end of the session, there be they they have a few tips to know what to do. <laughs> Um, so, so as a performance coach, you, you mentioned um, that you guide leaders um, and you align their personal values um, with their leadership styles. Um, do you feel that, that then that helps to create a more authentic um, and effective leadership approach? Well, no, I mean, you've hit on a key word there about authenticity. And I think from a leadership perspective, authenticity is more important than ever. Yeah. People don't leave organisations, they leave leaders. That is one of the top three reasons why people leave an organization and therefore the quality and the caliber of leadership capability is really important. And one of the questions I always challenge leaders on is do people follow you because they want to, or because they have to, and leadership is not about title. It's about how you inspire others, how they want to be led by you because you create the environment for them to bring their A game and be the best version of themselves, that you help them to grow and be better individuals, not just professionally, but personally as well. Um, so I'm really passionate about purposeful, authentic, inspirational leadership is such a 
integral part of building a high performance legacy business today? Fabulous. Um, and you mentioned grow there. Um, so you you actually, one of your first books, I believe, um, Built to Grow, um, emphasizes on the concept of scalable and sustainable business growth. Um, can you share some of those key principles from the book um, uh, that you believe are particularly relevant in the current business landscape? So I think you've hit on a couple of key words there about sustainable and, and legacy. Um, I always talk about accelerated, sustained and profitable growth. So let's just deal with each of those three elements because they absolutely underpin all the work that we do. Number one, accelerated. When you get um, quick wins and you get marginal gains, then that breeds confidence. And yeah. when you've got that forward momentum and that's working for you in your business, then you know that really breeds success and success breeds success. And I think it's really important at the start of the year that sometimes it can be overwhelming when we talk about planning for success. When you think about new year, clear, clean slate, we've got to deliver our goals. And particularly if you work in sales and you think, oh my God, the clock is reset. Now we've got to deliver whatever the revenue goals and targets are for your business. That can be quite overwhelming. So I think when you break it into bite-sized chunks that you think about marginal gains, you think about where are those quick wins and that gives you that accelerated forward momentum where you're on the front foot, not on the back foot. The second part is about sustained. All the work that we do is not about creating a hot bath effect. It's about how do you create sustained success? And that's about being really conscious and deliberate about what the success formula is for growing and scaling your business and to be the most effective, authentic, purposeful leader that you can be. And of course, business is about profitable growth. Um, yeah. You know, and profit should not be a dirty word in business. You know, we need profit because if we've got profit, then we can reinvest in the success of the business. And of course, it's a virtuoso circle that then creates a sustainability because you're generating sufficient profits to reinvest, make sure the business is relevant, make sure you're investing in infrastructure, people, assets that you need in order to build that legacy sustaining business. So that's that's kind of the essence of the three pillars that I think really underpin a lot of the work and that for me is about what creates a built to grow business. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and getting the title of the book in there as well. So <laughs> well done. <laughs> so I think we've, we've mentioned obviously that you've worked closely with Sims for a number of years now. Um, and I think you've helped transform our business um, and made, we've made some real fundamental changes um, to how we approach our business and, and our leadership styles. Um, you've really uh, focused on creating a positive workplace culture um, and that's really demonstrated here at Sims. Can you share some sort of practical strat strategies for leaders leaders to enhance employee engagement and satisfaction, um, I guess, which ultimately contributes to a more productive and enjoyable work environment? Yeah, so um, there's a couple of key points that, that you've hit on there. And I think it's worth just reinforcing that when I, yeah, I have been working with Sims for a while now, and it's, you know, it's a phenomenal business. But when I started working with Sims, it wasn't that the business was broken. The challenge from Andrew to me and from the leadership team was how high is high and how do we really future-proof Sims to ensure that we are relevant? And I talk about three things. How do you build a relevant business? And I think the relevance question, particularly at the start of the year, is a question that we should be asking on, on a multi-layered approach. So how relevant is Sims right now in the marketplace for its clients, for its customers, how relevant is it for its vendors? And are we a, a partner of choice for our vendors? But also there's the question of, are we an employer of choice? And one of the things that's great about Sims is the retention rate of colleagues and the employee satisfaction that we've got. And when you think about differentiation as a business, there's only three ways that you will truly ever differentiate a business. It's not about your products and services. It's not about your pricing strategy because people will copy those things. Your differentiation comes down to three things. It's people, it's culture, and it's service experience. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is that, um, you know, particularly, and that transpires from and Andrew, and as leaders, we cast our shadow over our organizations every single day. I, I call it your leadership shadow and thinking about your leadership brand. And culture comes from the owners and the leaders of the business, ultimately, um, but there's a phenomenal amount of work that Sims put in in terms of creating a high performance culture where people can come to work, where it's a safe environment, where people can do their best work um, and where they truly feel valued, but also therefore will go the extra mile. And I think when you get the culture right, 
then you tap into the discretionary, the optional commitment of your people because they go the extra mile. It's not just a job for them. It's a it's a career. And you talk about me being passionate, but I see a highly motivated, inspired team of people who come to work at Sims every single day, day who are passionate about what they do, the value that they add and the difference that they make. And you can't copy that, Mel. You can't yeah. copy culture. It's it's the unique DNA that the business have. And when you get the right people with the right culture who deliver the right service experience, then you really can create your own blue ocean and give yourself a competitive advantage over everybody else in the marketplace. Yeah, and I think yeah, absolutely with that. I think um, we, we sort of often talk about the friendships that have been built through our, our work. And at the end of the day, you spend such a portion of your time with your colleagues, um, obviously to, to get on and enjoy one another's company um, and feel like you're you're all working towards a sort of a common goal um, and you're, you're recognised for those efforts. And, um, yeah, it certainly uh, makes you feel like you're part of something bigger, which, um, yeah, which I think is is really fundamental. And that is from the top down. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been great with that respect. Um, and I think so we can't point on to what you're saying there, that I think we, we over engineer and make life more complicated than it needs to be. And one of my yeah. fundamental principles is about sim- simplicity is genius. How can you simplify the agenda? And when you think about success in business, ostensibly it comes down to what I call the three bottom line measures. You want to be a provider of choice for your customers and your clients and for your vendors. You want to be an employer of choice where people love to work for the organization. And then you become an investment of choice. And actually the game of business is about how you absolutely drive those three metrics and ultimate measures of success Provider of choice, an employer of choice, and an investment of choice. I yeah. think, you know, Sims are constantly on a pathway where they're constantly doing that and sense checking and making sure their relevance in the marketplace against those three key growth levers. Yeah, and you, you raise quite a, a, a good point there that it isn't just something that's sort of, you know, 2nd of January, rewrite plan, and then it's sort of put to one side. It's you have to constantly review that, don't you? Um I mean, we've been been living in a bit of a, a strange strange time of, of late, and then the business uh, landscape is is a whirlwind, isn't it? So, um, I suppose what are, what are some of those common challenges that that businesses are, are facing today that, um, that that perhaps can be overcome by um, sort of having a, a, a plan from 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 leadership? So, I think there's I think there's two things. So, I always talk about failing to plan is like planning to fail. So you've really got to get your plans at the start of the year. And there's a great exercise that making this practical for our listeners that I always at this time of year, particularly at the start of the year, do an exercise with all my clients. And you'll see this on social posts that we do over the next few weeks that imagine it's Friday, the 20th of December, 2024, and you're doing a review of the year just before you close down for Christmas. And imagine that you were writing your executive summary in the present tense as if you are summarizing how 2024 has played out. What would that executive summary talk about? What would it talk about in terms of the successes that you've achieved, where you're at from a revenue and a growth perspective, about the culture that you created, about how you've delivered for clients? What would be in that executive summary? And what I position it is it's almost like the try before you buy. How can you transport yourself into the future to Friday, the 20th of December, and almost write that executive summary as if the year has already played out? And then what that does is it's like putting the frame on the picture in play because that gives you your playbook for the year that then you can start to fill in the pieces and slot the pieces together. And it's such a cathartic exercise to do, but what it does is it makes you purposeful, it creates focus, it gets you in the right mindset, and it sets you up for success. So in terms of that plan, that's a great great exercise to do um, to really get you focused in terms of what your goals are for the year. I, think and I like other- that I like that idea of like looking into the future. I think, um, like you say, if, if you say it out loud or put it on paper, then it's almost like you're making a commitment to yourself um, or to the business or however you, you know, those individuals and business plans. Um, it yeah, makes it tangible, doesn't it? It does make it tangible. There's two things which you just triggered me with. One is to make sure that you sign it and date it. Okay. 
<laughs> so I did. I finalized mine this morning, and I, I finished it at six fifty eight this morning. So I signed it, and then it's kind of got Wednesday the third of January. 0658 and it's that commitment that puts the marker down in wet ink that says right go make this happen and turn it into reality it's funny isn't it because you're you're almost signing a contract with yourself there like i'm going to i commit myself that i'm going to do this and it's exactly that it's about self-contracting life is about being your own performance coach Mm -hmm. it's about putting yourself in the driver's seat of your life it's about living with deliberate conscious intent as the architect of your own destiny and that's yeah. not just an exercise that you can do from a business perspective. You could write the executive summary about what success looks like on Friday the 20th for Sims, but every single individual colleague in the business could also write their own individual success definitions for the year that pick yeah. up personal and professional success that ultimately are the building blocks that feed into ultimately Sims being enabled to deliver the collective whole, the purpose and the vision of what the organization is trying to achieve. So there's individuals thinking, how does this work for me? Do yeah. the exercise for yourself. Friday, the 20th of December, 20, 2024, you've had a fantastic year. You've smashed it out of the park. You've achieved your personal and professional goals. Write the executive summary about what you've achieved. And I think, do you know what? So that kind of reminds me, I think we're going back two years now. And I think we had a session with you and it was, you know, from the professional and, and um, uh, p personal perspective, um, but you were right do down those goals. And I think at that time, it had been a bit of a strange time being a mum of two and stuff. I was like, where are my priorities? Um, but we had a vision that we wanted to renovate our house. Um, and it was, it was a, at that moment, it was a, a dream, I think. Um, but we did, I sat down in your session and that was one of the things that I put down. And I can confirm that we moved back into our house last year, had Brilliant. Christmas with all the family. Um, and that sort of rung that bell that I was like, I made that commitment. And um, obviously from a personal perspective, but I had to make changes to my working pattern and um, lifestyle, you know, had to ask for help and different things. So my results resources had to, to change um but actually I've really had that review um so before Christmas sitting down at that dinner table with the family thanking those people that had sort of helped it uh, sort of ach us achieve it um so I think that that sort of celebrating success I was able to finally finally do so um Amazing. yeah I I did listen in one of your sessions I promise oh. <laughs> well, you're living, you're living evidence of this stuff works, Mel. And, and the reality is when you commit and get stuff down in black and white, mm. it's like sending a hot wire message to your brain that says, this is real, go and make it happen. Yeah. And is that soft contracting, as you talked about, soft contracting with self, that the moment that you commit your goals to black and white, then synchronicity and, and the world moves for you as well. And you start to see links about how you can join up the dots and how you can achieve your goals, both personally and professionally. Yeah, this and works. it was having that conversation with your partner as well. So it was like, we've got to do this together. So we both had to be on the same page. Changes needed to be happen to, to both our lives to to enable us to, to I suppose, achieve it. So, um, yeah. yeah, really, yeah. So thank you for that. <laughs> oh, and, and Mel, just picking up one of the other things that I think is a challenge in business when you talk about success in 2024, um, communication is the Achilles heel in a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Sims is a great example of this. We are relentless as a board and Andrew is relentless about doing the quarterly updates. Yes. You know, Andrew sends out a weekly comms every Friday. He doesn't miss a beat with it. Sometimes it might be short, it might be a one-liner. Sometimes they are longer. But effective communication and what people aren't up on, they're down on. And so many problems in business you will be able to actually work back to poor communication being at the heart of an issue or a challenge. So yeah. for me, the proactive communication and the consistency and the discipline about the frequency with which you communicate and the media through which you do it through is so important. So yeah. important in 2024. We've, we've talked about those um, sort of the, the weekly updates. And and like you say, come rain or shine, they they happen. I think we've had some whilst he's been on holiday and, and he yeah. will still provide an update for us. Um, but I think it does give us that alignment, doesn't it? 
because you know being hybrid now not everybody's in the office not all colleagues get to speak to one another so there is that one set of communication that unites everybody together and and provides them an update and like you say it's those small wins so you know whether we're celebrating someone's you know birth of someone's child or or you know all those personal things as well as what we've achieved revenue that that week or we're on set you know on track to to you know have a record month or whatever it's those things that then you you understand that you are contributing and it's making a difference so um yeah no they we we value those as, as like you say as, as small as they are they might be like a a small paragraph but um they're, they're quite impactful so um no, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so you haven't just got the the one book, you've got a, a newer book um, called Rise, um, and that explores the theme of resilience and overcoming setbacks. Um, can you share some of the key strategies from the book um, that leaders and individual, individuals can employ um, to navigate some of the challenges um, to come out stronger on the other side? Yeah, so it's it's really interesting when you talk about the contrast. So Built to Grow, which is the first one that you referenced, is all about how to grow and scale businesses. Rise is all about the psychology and the mindset of success. Mm-hmm. And the way that I frame it is this, that success in life is 80% psychology and mindset and 20% skill. So if you haven't got the right mindset, it doesn't matter about the, the strategies or the, um, you know, growth plans that you're going to deploy they will never deliver unless you've got the the mindset and the success that that sits behind them and you're right one of the things i talk about is is resilience and resilience has become an overused word both from a personal perspective and a professional perspective and when people talk to me about oh building a resilient business or um we need to develop personal resilience i would say okay but what what do you really mean by that because resilience is, is multifaceted. And the way that I think about resilience at its absolute core level is that, you know, resilience is a unique ability to confront reality head on, that you don't bury your head in the sand, whether it's from a personal or professional perspective, you're absolutely in touch with reality. And yeah. resilience in the in the climate that we're in is, is so important. So resilience from a business perspective is about don't have over dependency on one or two key clients because if you lose one of those clients it will break your business yeah how do you make sure that you've got the right vendor partnerships in the case of sims that give you the resilience that you've not got all your eggs in one basket and you have more offerings and a broader proposition that you can take to the marketplace for your clients yeah. how do you make sure you are resilient in your people strategy you've not got critical dependency on one or two people and you've got broad resilience across your people strategy. So when you start to think about resilience in that business context, it's it's multifaceted and it's and it's multi-layered. Mm-hmm. And then from a personal perspective, it is we all need personal resilience. You know, there's so many challenges that we face. And the metaphor I use is like a bouncy ball. You're always going to take knocks in life. But the great thing about the bouncy ball is the harder it hits the floor, the higher it bounces back. Yeah. And I'm not going to profess it to create an environment where you're not going to have challenges that you're going to face this year. But it's your ability to, how can one person look at the challenge and see it as an opportunity where somebody else will look at the same problem and they will see it as a problem and the world is ending, whereas somebody looks at it from an opportunistic perspective. So you know, personal resilience is, is, is really important. But personal resilience comes back from being really clear about your why, why you do what you do, what success means to you. Because when you've got that absolute clear why in play, then it's amazing how easy the what and the how falls into place. Yeah. Keeping that that purpose, I, I guess what you're saying there. Um, so what does success look like? So if we're looking back at 2023, um, what, are the, what are the some key metrics or indicators that professionals should um, assess to evalu- evaluate their success from the previous year? Obviously, you've mentioned about looking forward, but we need to celebrate success, I guess, make changes, adjust. Um, like you say, the, the, the world around us has changed. So what sort of indicators can we can we look at? to um to celebrate there so i'm going to break this into two facets because i think there's from a business perspective and there's from an individual perspective mm-hmm. uh, and not only businesses don't grow on their own leaders grow businesses great leaders today are data driven mm-hmm. and it still scares me how many businesses are not all, all over their data and the key metrics that allow them to understand how well they're doing and you've got to keep score 
So when you think about business success, there's three key top level lines in terms of your revenue, your profit, and your cash. And when you think about those three things, you know, which do most business owners or business leaders default to? They'll focus yeah. to the revenue number. So if, for example, if I had a room of a hundred business owners and I said, how's business, how big's your business? 99 out of the hundred will quote a revenue number to me. They'll say Royston MA, uh, a million pound business, a 10 million pound business, 20 million pound business, half a million pound business. The one in a hundred business owner will say, Royston, I'm a 2 million pound business making a 55% gross profit and making a 20% net profit. That's the smart business. The revenue line is the vanity line. The profit is the sanity and cash is reality. Yeah. And if there's one thing that we learned from 2023, and this is going to be even more important in 2024, is you've got to be all over. Where do you want your revenue line to be? And how does that split down across your various revenue income streams that you've got within your business? What's profitable? It's got to be profitable revenue. If it's not profitable revenue, why are you doing it in the first place? Yeah. And then the final bit is you've got to be all over your cash management Businesses don't go bust because on paper they're not profitable. Businesses go bust because they've run out of cash. Yeah. And in this current climate, you've got to be all over managing your cash, which is your debtor days and your credit days and making sure that ratio. So for any business leader, you know, the interdependency and their understanding of where they want to be from the revenue, the profit and the cash perspective is absolutely fundamental, both from a 2023, but also looking at, at 2024. Yeah. And from a personal perspective, it's about really, I go back to one of the exercises that we do every single year is we sit down and go, what does success mean personally and professionally? And out of that spins our goals, which become our C-smart goals. And they're specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, they're recordable, and they're timely. Mm -hmm. So from an individual perspective, I think it's about being really clear about success mean success definition personally, success definition professionally, and then using those two definitions to enable and really create your C-smart, your challenging but smart goals for what you're going to achieve in the year and making sure they are measurable, they're tangible, and that you're recording them on a regular basis. And I guess with that, then, because you've got the data down, then presumably if the if the circumstances change, they can be adjusted in, in alignment with that. I mean, you don't have to say this is what we're going to achieve and, you know, there's a, you know, a big stock shortage or something which is going to affect it. Then you need to diversify and, and find something that then is going to fill that gap because of those circumstances. Yeah, and you're spot on, Mel. And, and business today, you've got to be agile. The second question, we can talk about how relevant are you as a business the second question that sits alongside that, that every business leader should be asking on a regular basis is, how agile are we? Yeah. And that links into business planning is not something you do as a tick box exercise at the start of the year. Your plans should be agile. They should be dynamic. They should be live. And that agility is something that needs to be built into your business on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Because the one thing for certain in the marketplace we're in today it is a dynamic, fast-moving environment, particularly in the, the world that Sims operates in. Yeah. If you are not agile in your thinking, in your actions, in your behaviours, then you'll be left behind and you'll become irrelevant really quickly. So you mentioned about sort of remaining uh, sort of competitive and and how we um, can can leverage that. Um, we've as a business world we've seen lots of changes. Um, the introduction of AI. Um, how can you advise um, business leaders to stay adaptable um, and innovative? So to ensure that they they lead their team um, through industry disruptions effectively. Uh, great question. And my simple answer to it, bearing in mind how long we've got on the podcast today, is that <laughs> there's, as leaders, there's got to be a clear delineation between operating on the dance floor of your business, where you're <laughs> in it and doing the daily stuff, and then getting off the dance floor and getting into the balcony. Yeah. And any well-being coach will say to you, small meals on a regular basis are better than a big meal at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as leaders to have this conscious, deliberate intent that you think about your high performance week, high performance month, month, and you allocate time to being on the dance floor and working in the business versus getting on the balcony and working on the business. And part of your balcony time has got to be looking in your crystal ball, looking into the future and how you future proof the business. And you yeah. start to do the what if and possibility scenarios that says, you know, what is our industry going to look like in three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months time? And 
great leaders have got the ability to look around corners. Yeah. And part of the skill of a leader today is not only be focused on the here and now, but your job as a leader is to be future proof and for tomorrow. So you yeah. should be doing the 10 laps of the arena whilst all your people are focused on the, the here and now, and that you are already thinking about the curveballs, the obstacles, the opportunities that are going to manifest in 6, 12, 18 months time. And therefore, you're already starting to think about the plans to be able to capitalize on, on those opportunities. But you must, must, must make time, Mel, to get off the dance floor and, and carve out in your diary and block out some quality, what I call balcony time. Yeah, I do re do remember that from one of our sessions, actually. It's not very often I'm on the balcony of the, the dance floor. <laughs> 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 um, so I guess you're talking we've got a very positive mindset um, and I think that's that's great and I think being a leader you're probably involved in it but what if you face resistance so not every individual is perhaps going to be on the same page um, as as leaders um, so how can uh, sort of leaders out there embrace new tools or strategy um, to, to handle any sort of um, resistance from from their team so number one I who you spend time with is who you become mm -hmm. I think for organizations the better you are at defining the culture for your organization and not only what you do, but how you do it, then what will automatically happen then is you will start to attract like-minded people who gravitate towards that culture. Yeah. So I think the first thing is you've got to have the right people. You talked about values earlier. Where people have got aligned values, then it isn't like coming to work. It isn't a job. It's a career and when you get a high performance group of individuals who've got aligned values, who are aligned behind a common purpose, then you really can move mountains. So I think the first thing is that organizations need to be better, faster, smarter at being really clear about the cultural DNA of their business, because that will help to weed out individuals that might be in the business today who actually don't fit, but also where they are attracting that they attract the right talent into the business. Because the reality is today, Mel, you can't afford to be carrying anybody. There's no free rides. So it's about having the right people in the right seats with the right value set, with the right skill set to deliver in their roles aligned. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's the first thing. The culture helps to weed out. And that, that can be challenging because you might have colleagues in the business today. And the problem is the wrong people in your business will suck the life out of everybody else and they will pull everybody else down. So sometimes it's hard decisions that you've got to make that you've actually got the wrong people in the business who are actually toxins of the culture. Yeah. And sometimes you have to exit exit those people and make sure that you recruit in people who, who are, are aligned. And I think you're like, it, it's almost like a contagious, isn't it? I guess if, if there is any sort of negativity, then that you took, we've talked about mindset, then perhaps that can be a, a catching and, and you obviously want it to, um, to, to maintain in a positive um, and a aligned approach, isn't it? So yeah, no, well, no derailing here. <laughs> no, no derailing behaviours. And that, you know, that comes down to being really, being really clear. And if there's one thing I've learned from 20 years of doing what I have done, wherever I see organisations, they always say, I wish I'd spent more time in the early stages of our growth journey, defining our culture and what we're about as an organisation and getting our DNA right, because we wouldn't really... have made so many people challenges and issues along the way. Yeah, so culture is really important. Like you say, it's the the foundation levels there. Um, time spent doing that will then allow that you're not going to be spent time um, training people and investing in in sort of the wrong wrong. Um, Wrong, wrong people for perhaps of the business and there's no harm in that is there I think um I think we always think that we want to attract everybody but like you say those that are aligned to the same the same values and same sort of outlooks um obviously is what creates a successful team so um it's that's great about what you want to be doing in your recruitment is qualifying people out not qualifying them in okay it's a different way of thinking about it yeah absolutely it's almost it's almost if you almost say to people, for example, if I was interviewing you and I turned around to you in the interview and said, Mel, I'm not sure you're right for this, for the for Sims. You know, I want to see the fight that's in you. They go, actually, Royston, I think I am right. Tell me why you don't think I'm right. Where yeah. do you think there's a misalignment? 
And if somebody's not got that bite and that hunger, then maybe they aren't right for the organization. Mm -hmm. You know, qualifying people in as, as much as you are, or qualifying them out as much as you are qualifying them in is such an important part. And the other thing is, which we, which we alluded to earlier is the leadership shadow is really important. The way the boss comes in in the morning is the way that people leave at night. Yeah. And culture comes from, from leadership. So it's no good defining a culture if leaders don't show the way and demonstrate and live those behaviors first. And that's mm -hmm. one thing I think is phenomenal about Sims. You have authentic, purposeful leaders who are absolutely brand guardians of the culture and the values and what Sims stands for. And therefore, that makes it so much easier, which is why all your key vitals and all the key metrics then around employee satisfaction, employee retention, employee product productivity are so high because the right environment's in play for people to really want to come to work and do their best. And what's really, really important there, I suppose, is to highlight is, is the leaders certainly within our business are, have a different style. So they aren't all the same. You know, they aren't all a, um, Andrew. Um, we are very fortunate to have a, a collective, um, different approaches, but actually they combine together as a, a leadership team. They obviously sit up, you know, in a, a, a meeting and, and, but they then come back and then they, they obviously filter that through through their team so I think that diversity of, of not everybody sort of fitting within a box uh, certainly um allowing their individuality um is very evident and that allows then others to feel that that, that they can be their authentic self so um yeah that's been a, a sort of something that we've not I, I've certainly noticed over um sort of the past few years which has been great you spot um, on that. it's about cognitive and cultural diversity yeah, you don't absolutely. want clones. You want that diverse thinking because it's about debating for the right answers. And when you get that cognitive and cultural diversity, then you know the the, the coming together of the the minds who have got a line set of values that they're aligned to, but they come at things with a different perspective, which allows yeah. you to then get to the right solutions that are right for the organization, that are right for clients and customers, and right for future proofing the relevance of the business. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so finally to close, um, what key strategies um, and advice would you recommend for listeners um, on how companies can foster innovation and adaptability in the coming year and beyond? So the number one is that um, innovation comes from the people who are doing the job every single day. So it's not a leader's job to innovation is, is a, a part of your cultural DNA. And I think you've got to define what you mean by innovation. Is innovation about big game-changing moves in terms of that you want to do as a business? Or is innovation about where are the marginal gains every single day, where there's a process that we're doing that is clunky, that isn't working, where yes. there's something that we're doing that is detracting somebody away from being able to add value? So I think, one, it's about being really clear about what you mean and how you are defining innovation. And secondly, making sure that, Everybody in the organization recognizes that they have a part to play in, in, in innovation, whether that is about process involvement, where that is about ideas of how they can do things better, where that is about how we improve communication, where it is about how we improve employee engagement, whatever it is. And I think if you can really get innovation to be at the epicenter of your cultural DNA, where everybody recognizes that they have a part and a role to play in innovation. And you really tease those ideas out from everybody. And those ideas are valued. And the key mail is to make sure that if people put ideas forward, whether you adopt them or not, you have to close the loop with people and go back and say, number one, thank you, great idea. We're gonna adopt that. We're not going to adopt it. Here's why. So that what yeah. you end up with then is this virtuoso circle of innovation, creativity, where people are constantly restless in making sure that we're not in complacency, where we don't fall into the seven most expensive words in business, which are, that's the way that we've always done it. Um, and that's the way we're going to do it in the future because that's the way we've always done it. And you no, know, Sims is a great example of this. Sims is a day one business. It's got a yeah. day one mindset. And at the heart of a day one business is innovation, creativity, this restless pursuit of excellence where every single colleague in the business is focused on how do we make it better? And if that's a small marginal gain, if that's a big innovation, then great. But everybody is focused on that 
forward momentum driving to better and be deliver excellence in everything that we're doing right no fabulous thank you um and i feel like we should circle back to 20, 20th of december is it 2024 yep. <laughs> see where we are <laughs> no well, and um, it's been been fabulous to have you Royston um really appreciate appreciate all your advice um and uh I'm, I'm I know that you know even just the the short speaking to you now I'm going to go away and um sort of reevaluate and look at those goals and what we've got for the year ahead so um I hope uh, our listeners um will be encouraged to do the same so thank you very much for your time um That's and uh, you, we Mel. look we look forward to seeing you very soon brilliant take care Take care, Royston. Bye. Bye. Bye.